Hyplet Store offers the finest quality clothes and accessories with one-of-a-kind designs. And to make things even better, every single item is in a 50% discount with worldwide free shipping included. Hypletstore.com, there's a bit of everything for everyone. Smash that thumbs up button if you like Pawn Stars. History Channel Pawn Stars have been entertaining us for 15 seasons now, but the Harrison's world famous gold and silver pawn shop actually opened its doors two decades before the show debuted. But even though the old man, Rick, Corey, and Chumley have a lot of experience in the pawning business, they are not safe from bad deals as even the best sometimes make mistakes. From overestimating values to purchasing stolen goods and fake items, here are 10 of the biggest busts in Pawn Stars history. In season 5, a man came in looking to sell an old baseball card that had been handed down in his family. The rare 1909 Kai Young card was in bad condition, but since Rex Expert wasn't available at the time, he decided to take a gamble and struck a deal with the seller at $300. However, when the specialist for sports memorabilia came to the pawn shop to check the card out, he didn't have the best news for Rick. Since Kai Young was one of the most respected pitchers of all time and had such a great influence on baseball that he even had an award named after himself, the rare card from this extraordinary player in perfect condition could go for over $10,000 at auction. But the card that Rick had purchased was missing a corner and looked pretty battered altogether, so the expert estimated its value at no more than $200 to $250, meaning Rick had overpaid so much that he would even break even. Austin Chumley Russell often seems to be the scapegoat when something goes wrong at the pawn shop, but it is mostly deserved. In one episode, he was mining the shop by himself when he was offered a Gibson mandolin. Unfortunately, it was one of the thousands of fake ones that can be found around the US and was a name model with the Gibson on the headstock in the old script. It did have the decals on the edges and through one of the F-holes you could even see the stamp of the modern script Gibson logo, but besides that, it seemed different. Chumley still bought the mandolin for $1,500, despite the fact that his purchase limit is $1,000, which is not unfounded. A friend and music shop owner later estimated the mandolin's worth to be just $100. It's a 1961 Fender Stratocaster. The Fender Stratocaster is up there with the most iconic rock guitars in history. So where did you get this thing? This guitar's been with me. In Season 8, a studio musician called Vic Flick came to Rick Harrison looking to sell a 1961 Fender Stratocaster. Since it had such great history and had allegedly been played by great talents, Rick decided to buy the guitar for $55,000. However, Vic Flick is not really a legend or even a household name, and apart from the James Bond theme, most of the songs that had been recorded with this guitar weren't exactly huge hits. So when Rick put it up for sale in the shop at a price of $90,000, the guitar just started gathering dust until the next auction came along. But it came even worse for Rick as the Fender Stratocaster was eventually sold for merely $20,000, leaving Rick with a $35,000 loss. You've heard this guitar probably more times than you even realize. You've heard this particular guitar. Probably true, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think it's worth? Easily $60,000, $70,000. In 2012, Corey purchased what he thought to be a San Francisco Giants uniform that legendary baseball player Willie Mays had worn in a game in 1961 for $31,000. However, the alarm bells should have started ringing in his head right away since the uniform was in an impeccable condition and Willie Mays wasn't exactly known to shy away from sliding in the dirt. Apart from that, the seller couldn't produce a certificate of authenticity, but Big Haas bought it nonetheless. After the Harrisons failed to resell it at the asking price of $80,000 in their shop, it was eventually auctioned off two years later for just above $19,000. As it turned out, the uniform wasn't only an almost $12,000 loss and had never been worn by Maze during a Giants game, it had never even been his uniform in the first place. So it seems like Corey was still lucky under the circumstances, as the loss could have been much bigger, but that's probably not much of a comfort to him. Like every other pawn shop, the gold and silver pawn shop is taken and stolen property on occasion despite the great efforts they make under state and local laws and regulations to avoid doing so. In the episode Shekel and Hyde from season 7 for instance, Rick bought a 2000 year old Tyrian Shekel, a coin most historians believe was the mode of currency used in the infamous transaction of the 30 pieces of Judas paid to Judas to betray Christ. 
A detective later came to the shop and informed them that the coin had been stolen, not by the seller who was featured in the episode, but by a previous owner of the coin. However, the Harrisons were allowed to keep it in the end, as the original owner had been compensated by his insurance policy. But while they got lucky there, it turned out that Rick had paid way too much for the coin. Despite its rarity, a well-preserved shekel of tire would usually only be worth around $1,200 and this one had lost a lot of value because it had been cleaned, so most of the $1,600 that Rick had paid for the coin are probably lost forever. In the episode Cory's Big Play from Season 5, we got to witness another rare mistake by Rick when he bought something despite having doubts about its authenticity. A seller offered him a 19th century Wells Fargo strongbox with two old prison ball and chain sets from Yuma and Folsom prisons. And even though Rick instantly identified the ball and chain sets as fakes, he still paid $450 for everything. Another wake-up call should have been the fact that the owner was pretty defensive about his items, but Rick still thought he could make a little profit, only to have his hopes shattered when he talked to the expert. Mark the Beard of Knowledge Hall Patton called the box a complete piece of fantasy and told Rick that it was one of the most faked items altogether. This guitar was actually played by Jimi Hendrix. That's a big wow factor right there. Jimi Hendrix, he was an icon. This guy did things with the guitar that no one did before. This is the holy grail. I have a friend who if this thing is real, he will know. If Guitars are pretty common items in pawn shops, but when a guy came to the gold and silver pawn shop with a guitar and claimed it was one of Jimi Hendrix's collection pieces, Rick called in an expert just to be on the safe side. Jesse Amorosa of Countdown Guitars confirmed that the 63 Olympic White Fender Stratocaster had indeed been played by Hendrix as it showed all the marks and signs of usage, had all the historic photos and documents, and most importantly, the serial number. Eventually, the music expert estimated the guitar's value to be around $1 million, and Rick naturally tried to beat down the seller in order to make a big profit. However, the seller wasn't prepared to go lower than $750,000, but even though Rick ultimately offered $600,000, they didn't come to an agreement and the Pawn Stars lost out on the unique guitar. Yet the instrument still made it on the market a little while later. Interestingly enough, the seller was a Moroso of Captown Guitars this time, so it seems like there was some backdoor business going on. Well, he's bending the guitar. Yeah, physically out of bending right. the guitar. Right, right. The serial number here, L14985. This guitar has actually been documented. No doubt, this is definitely one of Jimmy's guitars. When a man dressed in a nice suit entered the pawn shop and offered Rick Harrison a pair of diamond earrings, which were of finest quality, Rick naturally made further inquiries as to how the seller obtained them. The seller had all the right answers and could even produce a receipt, so they came to an agreement and Harrison paid $40,000 for the jewelry. However, three days later the police came to the shop and it turned out that the earrings were stolen. They took them back to the owner and even caught the thief but the money was lost and according to Rick, this was the biggest bust he has ever had in the pawn shop. If the Harrisons can't get rid of an item at their gold and silver pawn shop, it is usually auctioned off after a while and that often comes with a loss. So, when Rick went to Julian's auctions in Los Angeles with several items to sell, including a 1940s Indian motorcycle with a sidecar, as well as the Fender Stratocaster that Vic Flick brought in, he was, unfortunately, in for a big disappointment. Aside from suffering a $29,000 loss on the bike and a $35,000 loss on the guitar, Rick's other items didn't seem to be too popular either and he reportedly lost around $100,000 at the auction overall. Some of the biggest losses that the older of the two pawn shop owners has ever made happened back in the late 1970s and early 80s when the so-called cubic zirconius or CZs first appeared in the markets. These clean-cut synthetic diamonds fooled innumerable pawn shops all across the United States as they would appear to be 100% real when never tested at that time. The old man's shop suffered a loss of around $30,000 due to the fake diamonds, but he has learned his lesson since and even filmed a PSA about CZs and how to detect the fake diamonds. In a nutshell, the zirconias are too perfect and if you can't find even the slightest hint of a scratch or the like, they are most probably false. So you may want to carefully check them out under a magnifying glass or even take them to an expert for examination. Thank you so much for watching guys and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you are new. Also don't forget to turn that post notification bell on so you never miss our uploads. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.